Hey guys, today we're going to render denim. That is today's subscriber requested video. And originally the subscriber requested that I do a demo on denim using color pencil. But uh, I decided to expand upon that and show you guys how to do denim in a variety of media. I'm going to demo on markers, color pencil, and a couple of different painting methods. Let's start by talking about what denim is. Denim is a mostly cotton fabric that is constructed in a twill pattern so that it looks like there is a diagonal texture to the surface. And it's woven with indigo dyed yarns going in one direction and undyed yarns going in the other direction so that, you know, the inside of denim is a lighter color than the outside. And then when you fray denim, it looks white along the edges because it, it's exposing those undyed yarns. Chambray looks similar to denim, but is typically much lighter weight and is woven in a basket weave or plain weave so that it doesn't show that those diagonal twill texture on the outside. And so chambray being much lighter is used for shirts and like shirt dresses, that sort of thing. Whereas denim is typically more used for uh, skirts, pants, jackets. Either way, you can render denim and chambray in the same ways that I'm going to show you today. Just that when you're drawing chambray, you are typically going to draw them, draw it as a softer, drapier, thinner fabric than most denims. So I drew the back of my pencil skirt. Most of you who watch a lot of my videos already know that I like to use marker paper for marker work and I like to draw on the wrong side and render on the right side of the paper unless I'm doing a lot of asymmetrical clothes and then I just get mixed up and so I stick to having everything on one side. Denim is not a shiny fabric so I'm going to color the whole thing without leaving any white spaces. This is a, a Copic in B99. When I'm choosing shadow colors, I go one of two directions. If I'm using a really bright color, like bright yellow, poppy red, then I don't want to dull it down with a lot of gray shadows. And so I will shadow with a darker version of my fabric color. But with something where I want it to look a little bit duller, like neutrals, you know, camel woolens and charcoal suitings and denim, where denim's not really bright, but kind of more beat up, then I'm going to go for gray colors. Now, if my neutrals are warm, like browns and camels, then I will choose a warm gray or a French gray. And if I have a cool neutral like these dark jeans, then I will use cool gray markers. This is at 80% and I'm going to pretend that my light source is over here and so I'm going to go under this butt and on this side and then these drapes and then kind of in between the thighs here like so. And then on this guy I'm going to use a 20% gray, pretend my light source is over there. Wow, that is not dark enough at all. Here's 30. In the drapes, this back leg. Now, the number one rule of rendering any fabric, if you are rendering it for design communication purposes, is to really pay attention to the fabric that you are specifically rendering and render it to match that fabric. So, you know, sometimes you'll have denim like this where there is no distinguished wash and you see kind of like a light fade across the top of the thigh. Sometimes you will have denim like this where you see what looks like you know, up and down stripes of white. So pay attention to your fabric. And you could do a couple of things. You can take your color pencil and add that white wash, those, the fade across the tops of legs and 
on top of your butt, those soft bleached areas. Take your finger or a Q-tip and kind of rub that in. If you want something to look super bleached, like the tops of the thighs of your jeans are super, super bleached, then you can use charcoal pencil. This is white charcoal pencil, and it is super bright. So you can pick a white color pencil for a softer look. You can pick a white charcoal pencil for a more white, intense look, but do not mix these two together. They don't really play well together. They have a tendency to streak. So test on a scrap and pick one to go with. And then I would go in and put in my details. I would do all these details on dark denim with a white color pencil because it has a soft look and I want to retain the soft look. If I were to do these details in white gel pen, it would the fabric would start looking shiny, like the top stitching was done in a shiny fabric or I had like super shiny white piping or something. So match the medium you use for your details with the texture of your basic fabric. With shiny fabrics, I would use a gel pen or like a pigment fine liner, like a micron to do details because they're slick and smooth. And then with soft fabrics like denim, I would use color pencil to pop out details because it's got a soft texture, okay? Match those textures. With lighter denim, I would work the details with a regular pencil. And sometimes I like to add the twill texture and I'm using this 0.3 pencil. It's super fine and light. And I'm gonna add a bit of that twill texture. You don't want it to look like stripes. You want it to just look like texture. It's real subtle. You gotta keep your pencil super sharp. If you're doing this with color pencil, like if you're doing it on the dark denim with a white color pencil, you basically have to sharpen your pencil after every 10 strokes. And then I would go in and put in my details. And then I would switch to a softer, fatter lead to do the outlines. And keep those strips crisp. This denim is pretty stiff. I mean, even beat up denim is stiffer than a lot of other fabrics. I have a whole video on jeans construction and vocabulary. I'll drop the link below and you can go check that out if you're interested. Whenever you do twill, keep a few things in mind. The rules for twill are, do not twill across seams, you'll flatten out the figure. Do not go edge to edge, you'll flatten out the figure. Do not drop twill all the way straight down a pant leg, you'll flatten out the figure. You wanna drop that texture randomly across breaking up the direction with your drapes and you don't want to do it in just one small section because then it'll look like a design you want it patched all over your garment so that it looks like an all-over texture another thing i like to do is i like to hold on to dried up markers because sometimes i can create interesting textures with the dried up markers so this is what it looks like You know, I'm coloring the whole thing using my dried up marker. You know, I try to stay up and down as much as possible so that it looks like the bleached out texture of the denim. I'm gonna go in here and do the drapes. Some drapes coming across the crotch, crotch whiskers and whatnot. This is when you want like a real messy look. I'm 
And then again, I would go in and put in my waistband and my belt loops. And whenever you do cuffs and denim, it's going to be lighter on the inside. So I'll do a gray or a really dull muted blue. I'll add that texture. If you want to do any kind of rips or shreds, all you have to do is just take your white pencil, color pencil, charcoal pencil, whatever, and just put in your rips. Just shred that, and then if it sticks out, you're gonna draw the rest with pencil so you can see it against the white. With color pencil, it's pretty easy, you know, first find a color pencil that matches your fabric and I'm going to lay down color pencil lightly throughout my garment and then I'm going to pick my light source my light source is over here and so I'm gonna start coloring my shadows so you know the dark side of the light over here you can always add more color. It's much harder to erase color, so work slowly and add a bit at a time. Creases across. You know, build up your color as intensely or as faded as you need to. Here's the thing, you know how we added white color pencil to the tops of the thighs and stuff like that on the marker? You don't wanna do that on your color pencil because when you add white to color pencil, you start making it look, you start mixing it and blending it. And that to me does not look like denim. That's starting to look I don't know, milky, mottled, shiny, you know? And I like the texture, the dry texture of color pencil to express denim. And I think that's really all you need. If you're going to draw the skin after, you can't paint, you have to remember to not paint in your shred. So remember to go just underneath that so that you keep the shredded hems white. I mean, some people do like that burnished white look where it looks a little bit more, you know, less textured and more solid, I guess. I'm not a huge fan. Okay, but you could do that. Plus white, minus white. So my super cool young hip students have been telling me that nobody calls these kinds of shorts Daisy Dukes anymore. So uh, one, I've totally dated myself, and two, so what are you supposed to call them? They didn't really know either. They kind of looked at me blankly, but they're like, yeah, but we definitely don't call them Daisy Dukes. We have no idea what you're talking about. So if you know, drop me a comment. Um, short shorts, booty shorts, booty pants, hot pants. I don't know, whatever. Now I just sound like a really unhip old person. Just, you know, put me out of my misery now. Thanks. Uh-huh. One of my favorite ways to render denim is wet on wet technique because it gives me the soft, bleedy, not harsh edges look that, you know, is denim. To review, wet on wet technique is adding wet things to other wet things. I know, it's a very obscure term. So basically, I have my drawing here and I'm going to lay down water and then before the water dries completely, I'm going to lay down my color. Number one. Number one. Ugh. Number one. Oh my god. 
seriously. <laughs> Number one, the paint will go wherever there's water. And so just because you can't see the water doesn't mean you get to splash it around everywhere. You have to contain the water to the section you want to paint. And then you're going to put down your paint, whether it's ink or gouache, and then your paint will spread. Because of that, I always like to do one section at a time. Actually, you know, if you are familiar with any of my paint rendering uh, videos, then you know that I just like to paint one section at a time anyway. So I will do this one pant leg. And then once that is 100% dry, I will do the other pant leg. Because if I have this wet and then I start doing this one, then the paint will just go into the other pant leg and I don't want that to happen. I want to keep it real separate. Take my water and I'm going to paint just this leg with water. You know, tilt your head so that you can see the shine of the water. You know, sometimes I use a water that's just barely tinted in the color that I'm going to use just so I can see what the hell is going on. And then I take my paint that I've mixed already. This is gouache and it's a mixture of indigo, black, and water. And I love that it just is so soft and it just looks soft. These look like lived in jeans that you really want to steal from your boyfriend. Now, if I want to erase parts so that I can have white patches on the thighs, I dry my brush and I scoop up some of the paint here. If I want to scoop more up, I will add a touch of water, dry my brush and then scoop again. And if I want to add a little bit more shadows, I will take my paint and just add a little bit to the back. Just a little bit to those wrinkles. All right. And then I will wait for this to dry 718%. And then I will do the other leg. Like, Zoe, what do I do in the meanwhile? I, I don't know. Pick a hobby or paint something else. When I was in college, you know, our teacher would assign us, oh, 12 illustrations this week, eight illustrations this week, whatever, right? And so what I would do is I would mix a batch of skin color and I would have all of my illustrations for the week drawn out. And then I would just go and do all the skin color. And then by the time I got back to the first illustration, the paint would be dry so that I could move on to the next step. But you know, that's only if you go to a slave driving school like the one I went to. <laughs> and I say slave driving fondly. I went to an excellent school. I still love my teachers. What? This one I painted in advance so that it would be dry by the time I got to this part of the tutorial. And so I colored the whole thing in blue in the same gouache that I've just been using. And the cuffs, of course, I painted in the lighter color which is just the same as this color, but diluted with more water. And then I'm going to take my indigo and I'm going to add shadows. And if you have no idea how I'm placing my shadows, I have a whole video called, um, what did I call it? Uh, making figures look 3D with shadows or something, whatever. It's a quickie eight minute or so video on how I pick a light source and lay down shadows, so you can go check that out. Now, when I want to add the faded patches, sometimes I like to use a dry white wash. And this is a completely dry, really super stiff brush. This is a cheap oil brush that I got at a major art store chain. So it should not be hard to find at all. And I picked that oil brush that had the stiffest bristles. I just cut the end off because I don't like long handles. And here is some dry gouache that I don't have any water on. And 
Again, start lightly because you can always add more, but it's really hard to take it away. But okay, I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of water. Really dry, really stiff brush with really dry white wash and add the texture. And then when everything is 118% dry, you can go in and add your details. Okay, you never want to add dry media to wet media because all you're going to do is carve up paper. Sometimes I like to add the twill lines. If it's really dark, maybe I'll add some of these details with the white. Okay, you guys, I'm going to show you this thing. This is my new favorite thing. And uh, confession, I'm not great at it yet, okay? I'm still playing around with it. And so if today's demo doesn't work out really great, uh, let me just apologize in advance. But, you know, I'm not so old and so jaded that I'm not trying to challenge myself and learn new things all the time. So check this out. Last semester, one of my students introduced me to watercolor markers. And I got a couple and I started digging around. And then a couple of my super adorable students bought me a bunch for an end of the semester present because my students are adorable. <laughs> and so I've been playing around with them some more. But, you know, in between school and the videos and all, you know, my other projects, I haven't really had a chance to just really get good at it, uh, but I did want to show you this one thing that I learned. I've been having fun rendering denim with it in preparation for this demo. They are Windsor & Newton brand. I have not seen another brand of watercolor markers, so I can't speak to whether this is a better one than another or whatnot. So I've just only been using these. And basically, it's watercolor in marker form. And they act like watercolor, like the more water you add, the lighter the color gets. Okay, you want to use it on watercolor paper because it does require water. And so if you use it on marker paper, your paper starts crinkling like crazy. So I'm just going to drop some color here. I don't need to color all the way to the edge because... I'm going to be spreading this pigment around and then I'm going to take a watery brush and I'm going to activate the paint and you kind of have to like scrub it with your brush a little bit so that you don't keep your regular marker strokes in there. unless that's what you want. And then I squeeze out the paint and then I start lifting stuff so that I can get, you know, the highlight patches on the top of the butt, you know, down this thigh, down this thigh. And if I want to remove more color, then I just take my clean brush and I add a little bit of water and then I remove that. So yeah, it acts like the other paints, but it's in this cool format. And I'm really excited about these markers, you guys. I'm definitely going to play around some more and do a future video on, you know, all the ways that watercolor markers are special. Ah! Oh, that was so fun. Okay, that didn't turn out so bad. But I really love this, this whole look, okay? I mean, this color is a little too bright to be denim. I mean, nobody wears denim that bright, but that's a simple matter of getting the right color, mixing the right color, okay? All things I'm going to address in that future video I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, and then once again, you're going to wait for this to be 287% dry to do any kind of finishing work with dry media like pencil or color pencil. 
So let's review. Venom. You can lay down your marker on marker paper, color the whole thing, and add shadows using gray markers, and then add soft white smudges or detailed textured twill. You can use a dry marker to create that textured look if you if that is more what your denim swatch looks like. Always make sure that your cuffs, anything rolled up or rolled down is of a lighter color. When you're working with color pencil, build your color slowly and carefully because you can't erase that. So start with the light overall color, add more color in the shadow areas. And if you want this kind of effect, you can take a white color pencil and kind of press into your bristle. If you want it to look more textured, that looks almost acid wash to be honest. <laughs> Oh my God, please don't make acid wash cool again. Like I already have the embarrassing photos from my youth, okay? And then with paint, you can do a wet on wet technique with ink or gouache or regular watercolor. Or you can do a regular painting where you paint the base tone, let it dry, add shadows, let it dry, and then take a super stiff dry brush with dry gouache and add some of the textured white. You can also add more twill on top of that. Again, depending on what your individual denim swatch looks like. And you can also get a soft bleedy effect by using watercolor markers and a ton of water. So I showed you guys seven different pairs of jeans. That should be enough to get you guys started. As usual, drop me all the questions in the comments below. If you have a request for a future tutorial, that's awesome. But do keep in mind that the current request queue is about 20 videos long. And I love it. I love that you guys are really excited to learn with me and that you're putting in requests. But I'm just throwing that out there. The queue is super long. Okay. And uh, that's it. You know the drill. You go practice. Okay? We are not made of magic. We are made of practice. So review. Check out my other links and go practice. All right? And I will see you next time.